Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It is December the 7th and we're looking at the last part of Daniel beginning at chapter 11. Now the prophecies of Daniel are so completely amazing and detailed that this book has come under very strong attack by skeptics. When Alexander the Great came to conquer Jerusalem he was met by the high priest who told him that his coming had been foretold and he was introduced to a copy of the book of Daniel. Alexander was so surprised to say the least that he worshipped the God of heaven. This is from Flavius Josephus. In this chapter Daniel gives the date again of the prophecy. Those who try to suggest a later date for this book have great difficulty regarding the dates of all the prophecies. And Daniel, along with many of the other prophets, gives the actual dates when he receives the prophecy, so that therefore there is no dispute about when the prophecies were given. And Daniel stands to try to strengthen Darius the Mede, yet he tells him the truth of his visions. First he describes three Persian kings, and of a fourth who was much richer than all of them. He will stir up the kingdom of Greece, then he speaks of a mighty king who will rise and rule with great authority, but his kingdom will be broken and he will be scattered into four regions. And the king of the south will be strong and one of his princes will be very great indeed. Then the king of the north will make a treaty with the king of the south through his daughter. Yet from your ancestors an army will invade and conquer some of the northern kingdom and carry away large numbers of captives um, um, to Egypt. Yet the king of the north will come and the king of the south will engage in battle. This back and forth between the north and the south will continue for many years. Eventually the northern kingdom will conquer completely and yet the king will die. A vile ruler will take the king's place and he will move south with a small force and spoil the land of Israel so that the southern king will rise up against him. This king will seek to pollute the sanctuary of the Lord. The people who know the Lord will be strong and will do exploits. The king, which we believe is the Antichrist, will exalt himself over everyone and call himself God. He will have no respect for the God of heaven, nor his son Christ, the desire of women. He will honour the God of forces. He will conquer the whole of the Middle East, including Egypt and Libya, and yet he will be destroyed and none will help him. It's interesting that... Um, um, the, the rule of the Antichrist does not seem to be a world dominion, it seems to be a Middle East dominion. So in the last chapter, Daniel describes the Archangel Michael who will stand up in the time of trouble, that is in the tribulation. He describes the resurrection uh, to damnation and to blessing. Those who are wise will shine like the heavens and they will effectively evangelize. Then Michael says to Daniel, shut up the words of this prophecy until the time of the end. This means that these things will not be understood generally until the end times. He says that in the end times, transportation will be even more prevalent and knowledge will vastly increase. Then Daniel saw two angels and one asked, when will these things take place? And the answer came back after three and a half years. The three and a half years is the end of all things and prior to the messianic kingdom. It's called by Christ the great tribulation in Matthew chapter 24. Daniel asked for further detail and he was told that these things are not revealed yet but from the time of the abomination of the desolation until the end of the times of the Gentiles which is the end of the 70th week of Daniel would be 1200 and 90 days. There was a special blessing on those who wait even for 1,335 days. Daniel, then Daniel is told to wait and that he will die and yet he will stand again in resurrection in his allotment at the end of these days. Now I want to go back over the passage and just pick out things that have flagged up to me today. 
the first chapter, chapter 11, is just um, um, a backward and forth of, of power struggle in the Middle East. But when we come down to verse um, 31, uh, the arms shall stand on his part and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the day sacrifice and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. So this is the Antichrist at his worst who is going to set up an image, an idol of himself in the temple of Jerusalem in Zion and there this abomination this desecration of the temple will be the thing that will bring about the wrath of God, the wrath of the Lamb upon the world. Notice verse 32, I love this, it says, But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Now we don't know what they are. We don't know what they are. Presumably they are mighty deeds, but these are the people that know their God. They will be strong and in God's power they will do exploits. Now from verse 36 down to 39 we have a description of the Antichrist. It's, this passage is something that's poured over by people very intently. Um, I won't go into all of it just now. Um, what I will say is this, that when we get right away down to chapter 12, and verse 3 I was very struck by this by this thing today um, it says and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn away turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever now I just love that verse you see, there's going to be evangelism in the tribulation. Now, it's not going to be Christian evangelism. Nobody <laughs> that trusts in the law then will become a Christian because by that time the church will be complete and it will be glorified and in heaven. So there won't be anybody saved by grace and through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But they will turn to God and they will turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever now this is exactly in the old covenants it's got nothing to do with being a christian it's got to do with living righteously before their covenant god and then an angel at the end says how long will it be to the end of these wonders and the answer comes back it will be for a time times and a half so that's a year two years and half a year that's how long these um, great tribulations will occur. Now for those of you that are struggling with this passage, I want you to notice verse 8. <laughs> Daniel says, I heard, but I understood not. He understood what the words were, but he didn't know what it all meant. And that should encourage us. Very often when we come into the Bible, we see things, but we don't fully understand it. We might read the words and know what the words mean, but understanding what it all means is something that may be beyond us. Um, but, that, but the verse that's my password for today is the last verse of the book of Daniel. chapter. Thir it's verse 13. Chapter 12, verse, verse 13. And the Lord says to Daniel, Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. But go thy way till the end be. For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of days. So what God is saying to Daniel is this, Daniel, go your way until the end happens. You're going to die. You're going to rest. You're going to be going to the grave. However, you'll stand again. <laughs> and you'll stand again in the resurrection of the righteous. And you will stand in your lot at the end of days. Now what that means is this. There's going to come a time. When Christ returns to this earth. When Daniel will be raised from the dead. And he will stand in his allotment. Now what that means is. He will stand in the place that Christ will give him. The place where he will live for all eternity. He will have an allotment. A beautiful allotment. It may be a great mansion. It might be a great mansion with great fields and gardens. Whatever it is, it'll be the thing 
that God gives to him. So he's saying to Daniel, Daniel, you're going to die. But one day you'll stand again and you'll stand in your allotment at the end of days. Wow, what an amazing promise that is. So there we are, folks. Going to just um, uh, wish you God Godspeed for the day and uh, look forward to catching up with you in Hosea tomorrow morning. God bless you. Bye for now.